Math anxiety is no joke. It is something that a lot of people struggle with, and I have seen students struggle with this, and it is not good. You have students that are really smart, they work really hard, and they still don't do well. And I think math anxiety is a big part of that. In this video, I'm going to give you four very easy tips that you can try to follow that will help reduce your math anxiety. And obviously it's better if you do all four of these things, but even just doing a few I think is gonna make a big difference. I wanna emphasize that reducing math anxiety is really about two things. It's about increasing your confidence and it's about being ready. So if you feel that you are ready for the test, that's called confidence. If you're actually ready for the test, that's called being prepared. So when you feel that you are ready for a test and you're actually ready, you're going to do awesome. Okay, let's talk about four easy tips that you can implement that will help reduce your math anxiety. The first tip I have for you is to learn to study efficiently. This is extremely important. And by efficiently, I mean you want to maximize your study time. We only have 24 hours in a day, and so if you're gonna study for an hour or two hours, you want to make it count. Try to think of it as going to the gym. When you go to the gym, you have a workout that you maybe do for 30 minutes to an hour. You go there, you do it, you come home, you're done, and you feel great. Mathematics is the same way. You know, Try to have a set amount of time that you want to study. Many people say that studying for more than an hour is no good. Many people say that studying for more than half an hour is no good. The reality is, the higher up you go in mathematics, those techniques start to fail. Uh, you know, certain classes might take several hours of study time um, to, to get better at. And in those cases, you wanna maybe break up your study time into shorter intervals and make sure to take breaks. But in any case, I think timing your study sessions is a really big deal. I use a little timer, it's like a little kitchen timer. If I remember, I'll try to leave a link in the description. But the advantage to using a timer is that you don't have your phone. If you have your phone with you, at least me, it's really easy to get distracted. Like, oh, I have an email. Oh, I've got a text message. Oh, someone is calling me. Let me talk to them. <laughs> so it's very, very easy to get distracted with your phone. The same thing with computers. If you're doing online homework, it's a little bit harder because it's really easy to you know tab over and check something else. Like, oh, let me watch a video or oh, let me check my email. Very easy to get distracted with online homework. And that's one of the disadvantages to online homework is that it's on your computer, so it's easier to get distracted. But you want to pretty much try to minimize everything you have that can distract you. So computer, get rid of it if possible. Um, phone, get rid of it if possible. And you want to time your sessions so that you can have efficient study time. And again, you want it to be a distraction-free zone. If you live in, say, like an urban area where it's really noisy, you can get headphones, like earplugs, or you can listen to music too. For me, uh, music without words seems to work better than music with words. So study efficiently, time your sessions, find a quiet distraction-free zone, use earplugs or headphones if necessary, and you know eliminate your phone if you can. At least put your phone away, maybe turn it off. That's a really good way to do it. So you have this focused study time and you sit down and you study for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever time you feel is necessary. And then you just study, you do your best to focus and just be in the moment. But eliminating those distractions is key to learning to study efficiently. The second tip I have for you is to study a little bit every day. And the key word here is a little bit. So it's really easy to overdo it. This is something that I myself have a very hard time with. I tend to overdo it on certain things. And honestly, I think I've been getting a lot better over the years. I'm now to the point where I can work on a task for a little while every day and then move on. And tasks like mathematics, I don't know, they make me feel good. If I work on math for 45 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day or an hour a day on a specific subject, it just feels really productive. You know, if it's 9 a.m. and I sit down and I say, hey, I'm going to you know, solve some proofs for 30 minutes. I'm going to work on this book. I'm going to read a little bit and do a couple problems for 30 minutes. And I feel like I get a lot from that 30 minutes. And it's only 30 minutes of my day. Again, you know, if you time your sessions, it, it really makes a difference. Think of it as a workout. You know, people will run you know, for 20 minutes a day you know, for three days out of a week. Try to, try to view your studies that way too. Try to turn it into a habit. You know, little habits that you do every day. Try to turn study into that kind of thing where you study a little bit every day. 
And what you're going to find is if you do a little bit of math every day or you work on a specific subject every day, you're going to get better at it. And it's really going to help reduce your anxiety because you'll feel more prepared. The third tip I have for you is really fun to do, but much harder to implement. And it's to create a study plan. And this is something everyone loves doing. I love creating study plans. I like making little lists of things I want to do. The hardest part is actually sticking to it. And I think that in order to stick to a study plan, you should create a manageable study plan. So you want a study plan that incorporates that studying efficiently, that incorporates that studying a little bit every day. So maybe something like, I'm going to study for an hour every single day, and that's it. And if you want to study more than that, you can, but maybe take a break after that hour so that you do other things in your day. And so you don't feel like your whole day was spent studying. So creating a study plan is fun and there's all kinds of study plans you can create. I mean, I have spent uh, years creating study plans for myself when it comes to mathematics. So having one is a good idea. If you don't stick to your study plan, it's not the end of the world. I can't tell you how many times I've created a study plan that I don't stick to. That's why I really think learning to study efficiently and doing a little bit every day is key because from those habits, you can figure out, hey, what kind of study plan works for me? Do I, do I study better in 30 minute increments? Do I study better in the morning or at night? Maybe I need to study before I go to work. So you'll discover those things by just starting with these little habits that you can implement. And this will make you feel more prepared. You know, having a study plan is really good, especially if you can stick to it. And it should help you reduce your math anxiety. The fourth tip I have for you is to learn to try to keep a positive attitude. And this is one that I do have some tips for. So normally I'm a very positive person, but math, if you have pressure and you have grades, it can really bring you down sometimes. You know, you're taking three classes, you're feeling overwhelmed, you have a part-time job, maybe you have family, maybe you have kids, and it can really take its toll on you. And that can really increase your anxiety because you have this, this pressure to perform. And if you don't perform, you know, it's, it's really bad. I mean, you're in college, you're, you're doing your best, you have a lot of responsibilities. It's really easy for that to get to people. And so try to keep a positive attitude by remembering that you're actually learning something, right? You're actually getting better at math, it's not just about the grades, even though grades are super important, you are learning some stuff that is going to help you and you're becoming more intelligent, right? You're learning more mathematics. Also try to remember where you've been. I think that really helps people. If you know where you've been and you realize where you are now, you'll realize how much you've learned. You'd be surprised, <laughs> you'd be surprised how much math you can learn in a short period of time. I mean, sometimes you'll meet people and they seem really intelligent and they seem like they know so much more math than you, but maybe they're just two weeks ahead. You just haven't caught up yet. I mean, a lot of times that's how it is. You'll, you'll see people and they know so much, but you'd be surprised how quickly you can catch up. You'd be surprised how much math you can learn. If you learn to study efficiently, you time your sessions, if you make it a daily habit, and if you create a study plan, and if you keep a really, really positive attitude. So try to stay positive. Remember you're learning, and it is about learning, right? And math is about learning. So yeah, it's not just about grades. And tell yourself that whenever you're feeling down and remind yourself how much you've actually learned. So those are four very easy tips that you can use to help reduce math anxiety. And I say they're easy tips because they really are. They're really easy to implement. I think, in my opinion, the best tips are to study efficiently and to make it a daily habit. And I think after that, um, you can start to create a study plan. And when you do get burnt out, remember to keep a positive attitude. But if you keep your study session short and you make it a daily habit, I think that's going to make your attitude better because you're going to feel really good. You know, if you sit down for an hour and you do a lot of math and you get something out of it, you're going to feel really good about that. And it's going to help your attitude. The attitude really comes down when you start to burn out, when you take a bunch of tests and you do bad and you feel like you're just studying harder and harder and harder and you can't get better. That's really when when your attitude starts to go downhill. And when that happens, just remind yourself, it's about learning too. And maybe take a step back and you know reduce your study sessions and make them daily habits. If anyone else has advice for people on reducing math anxiety, 
please leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, people read the comments, and so when you leave a constructive comment, it helps a lot of people out there. Good luck.